About five years ago, I got back with an ex-partner, and while we were together, we went to a party his family held. One of his family members had started dealing drugs, and someone at the party was telling lots of people. When we left, I told my partner about my concerns and said it's risky if that person continues to do that. I then started to get messages from my guys of this family member's home being raided, possibly in the next few months. So I asked my partner if he'd talk to his family to warn them, to try and get them to stop. I thought the conversation would come better from him as maybe they'd be more likely to listen. He said he wouldn't talk to his family and then said very weirdly out loud that he doesn't care if they get caught and if they do it's their own fault. I then dropped the conversation and left it. Two to three minutes later I hear that the family member's home has been raided and then he was sentenced to prison. Later I work out that my partner had been working closely with the police on a different matter and they had been listening into the conversations we had been having. I later split up with my partner because things weren't right. A friend of his family showed me some interest so I thought why not just see where this goes. While we were together he spent our time testing me to see if I was a snitch. Him and his friends set up drug deals around me and sent some around to show me a tick book they had. He also showed me a gun that he said he kept hidden in the garden. I know that he was lying about hiding it in the garden because I saw him hand the gun to someone over the fence. When him and his friends were done testing me, he ended whatever it was that we had. About a month later, I decided to join a martial arts gym. While I was in a class, a guy approached me and we got talking. He said he was an instructor there and said he needed flyers done for his business. I still thought I was friends with my ex-partner, so I thought I would get him some business as he does design. The guy invites me back to his home to discuss this and I thought it would be okay because staff members at the gym seem to know him well. As soon as I enter his flat, my ex-partner phones me in a panic and demands that I give him the address that I'm at. I was a bit confused by the phone call, so I asked him why and he wouldn't tell me. So I just said no and put the phone down. As I got to know this guy, he tells me he used to be a drug dealer and that recently most of his gang have just gone to prison. Later he asks me if I'm an undercover police officer and I say no because I'm not and never have been. I don't know why, but for some reason he didn't believe me and wouldn't stop asking me. Over time, this guy tests me to try and get me to contact who he thinks that I'm working for. He said he was going to do some illegal things and also whacked me around the face and ordered me to get down on my knees to give him oral sex. He said he would kill me if he ever found out I was working undercover and then later threatened to burn down the home I lived in. He also admitted that he was friends with the previous guy that I was with. I was still living with my ex-partner and noticed that I was being followed when I left the house. I was scared because I didn't know what they were going to do and I didn't know when it was going to end. So in a state of fear and panic when this guy asked me again if I was working undercover I said (sighs) Okay, I'm not working undercover. I'm waiting for a shipment to come in. He said when. I think I said in about one to two years time to make it look more believable and also thinking that by me saying all this it would somehow better my situation in some way because I've seen this sort of thing done in films and it's always worked out well. The guy passes my number to his friend who I'd met but hadn't spent much time with. The guy's friend seemed nice and he said he wanted to hang out, so he invited me back to his home for a few drinks. It was a shared house and he wanted to chill in his bedroom, so I made it clear at the beginning of the night that I wasn't going to sleep with him. We spent most of the night talking and he tested me just like everyone else. By the time the morning came I was tired so I laid down on his bed to rest with my head facing the wall. After a while, I started to hear breathing in my ear and then became aware that he was copying my breathing. I got a message from my guys which said that this is a form of hypnosis and that he thinks you're under. So as he did it, I kept changing my breathing pattern so it didn't align with his. Then he tried other breathing patterns, I think in the hoping that I would copy him. I then wriggled a few times on a particular breathing pattern to see what he would do because I was curious as to why he was doing this while I was lying on his bed. He then tried other breathing patterns and I purposefully stayed still. He then kept going back to that same breathing pattern that I pretended to react to before and I continued pretending to react some more. I then heard him whisper in my ear, take off your trousers. I have to be honest, at this point I was curious as to what this guy thought he could do to women after thinking that he could hypnotise them to take off their trousers. So I took my trousers off and left my pants on to see what he would do. We got interrupted and I thought that was that. 
A couple of months had passed and I was still being followed. The guy I previously saw contacts me again and asked me if I wanted to meet up. I know I shouldn't have gone. But I wanted to see how things were because I would have thought by now that they would have known that I'm not connected to anyone. We spent the night drinking in his room and it was a nice evening. There were no setups or testing, just good conversation. We got really intoxicated and then later we got close. When we were, he does that same breathing pattern that I pretended to react to before. I think in the hoping that I would react again. I was like, oh okay, so that's why you've invited me round here. I thought it would be a bit rude not to play along with him, so I faked a fit when he did it to see what he would do. I didn't want it to be like an ambulance worthy fit, so I just kept it mild. He stopped what he was doing and asked me if I was okay, and I didn't really want to make too much of a fuss of it, so I just went, yeah. And then he just carried on. I never heard from him again after that night. A couple of weeks later, I thought I would arrange a night in with someone who I thought was a friend. She was related to my ex-partner and had unexpectedly invited a male friend over that I'd never met. We spent the night drinking at hers and later I realised that my drink had been spiked, I believe to make me more willing. She then arranges to go to bed early, which she never usually does. That guy then comes on to me and then does that same breathing pattern that I pretended to react to before. I wanted to see what he was going to do with this, so I played along and pretended to react again. Only this time I just continued to have a fit to see what he would do. He never spoke to me about it, just left me on the sofa and watched, which I thought was a bit weird. If that was me, I would be talking about it and showing concern. I'd also be asking questions and offering my support. I never heard from either of them again after that night. About a month later... I thought I'd treat myself to lunch in a pub. During my meal, a group of guys came in and sat round the corner from me. I finished my meal and on the way to the toilets, a group of guys asked me to join them. They seemed nice, so I said yes. We all got on well and they invited me to a few more pubs where more of their friends joined us. It was a fun, spontaneous evening. And then they invited me to one more pub, which was small. Everyone seemed real friendly in there, but later I'd noticed that the people that had taken me there had left. I then got chatting to two men at the bar and one of them said, I brought my sister along because we wasn't sure if you were a lesbian. I was a bit baffled because I'd never met these men before, but I made it clear that I am straight. I then got a message from my guys which said that they are linked to those men that I'd previously seen and the people in here are expecting you to go home with one of them. I looked around the room and it was full of men apart from the one lesbian that all looked at me like they knew who I was. I then noticed the pub door had closed and I panicked. The two men asked me to go home with them and I said yes just to get outside. They called a taxi and when it came I walked off towards the town centre. The two men followed me and one asked me again to go home with him. I said no and continued to walk where there was CCTV. That man then cornered me against a shop window, held me by my neck, and ordered me to go home with him. I said no. Luckily, a man was walking past, and the man holding my neck lowered his arm. I pleaded with the man walking past to let me walk with him, and he kindly said yes. I was still being followed, so I thought it would be best to contact the police, who said that they couldn't help me because it wasn't the same person following me more than once. So I decided to move away to make a fresh start and thought 200 miles would be far enough. After moving I got close with one of my neighbours and when we would hang out he would breathe heavily using what sounded like that same breathing pattern that I pretended to react to before with those previous men. I wasn't sure if he was trying to manipulate me or not because why would he be? I've just moved 200 miles away where no one should know me. So I tested it. I pretended to react to what he was doing and he seemed to pick up on it. He kept doing what he was doing and never talked about it, which I thought was strange. So I asked him, how is it that you know about that? He said he didn't know what I was talking about. As we grew closer, he continued using that same breathing pattern, thinking that it was manipulating me. I continued to play along to see what he would do. It seems that he would discuss this with others. They'd come up with new ideas together on what they thought might cause a reaction. He'd come back and then he'd try them out. 
I was like, I can't believe this has happened. I've just signed a six month tenancy agreement and I'm also being followed everywhere here as well. I wanted to make some good friends, date and settle down with a nice honest lovely man. I was a bit on edge about meeting new people because I didn't want to make the mistake of going home with a violent man again or anyone else that was connected to people that knew about this. The neighbour that I got close to, I felt relatively safe around. So I continued to let him think that their ideas manipulated me and caused a reaction. I thought that it was a good idea that the more they thought they knew about me, the better. That way, if any one of them approached me with one of their ideas or anything similar, I would know for sure that they were connected and maybe I would have more of a chance to keep myself safe. After a while, I realised that they were just curious as to how it worked and I hadn't been approached by anyone or lured anywhere. So I decided to admit to my neighbour that none of it was real. I explained my reasons for doing it and I apologised. He acknowledged what I said and said that it was okay. I asked him if he could let the others know because, well, I'd really like to get on with my life now. I was still being followed. And I wasn't surprised because somebody had told people in that area that I had been sent there by a London gang to get close to all the drug dealers. So the pretend gang that they made up could take them out and move in on their territory. They also added on to that, that I was a prostitute and a drug addict. Gee, thanks. The people that were following me would also get their friends to turn up to appointments that I'd never told anyone about. These appointments only ever discussed over the phone in my flat, which led me to believe that they could hear what I was saying. It also seemed that people were letting themselves into my flat when I wasn't there because when I came home, I had noticed that my belongings had moved. I wanted to know all this for sure, so I started pretending to talk to people in my flat. I set up a few things which confirmed that they could hear what I was saying. I then had a conversation where I made out that the pretend people I was talking to had left a parked car outside my flat with a camera inside that had picked up footage of every person that had entered my flat. I then said, if anything happens to me, I want this footage to be sent to my mother with a note for her to pass it to the police. They then made it so I couldn't stay in that flat anymore so I decided to move back to the town I grew up in where I thought I would be safe. Later, I contacted the police in my area and told them what had happened. I admitted what I did, because I had noticed that a huge amount of rumours had been spread about me, not just about all this, but also about when I went to Australia, and none of them are true. I expressed my worry and concern to the police officer that came round to my home, and I said that this is now affecting all areas of my life, including employment. I said I really need support on how to deal with the huge amount of people that are acting upon all these things that they've heard, which are not true. Thank you.